In this example, I'm going to do an auto follow a little differently. So let's import this 3D object that was created in a 3D program and I'll increase the size a little using the scale. Now let's add a texture map to the object. And I'm going to increase the brightness by changing the diffuse color to white. Because the bar has a texture, uh, I want to add a similar looking texture to the face of the text. Now when I place the text down to the bar, it seems to disappear. What actually is happening is the text is now in the middle of the bar. Uh, so to make it look correct, let's simply move the bar back on the Z plane. So now that the text is in place, let's open up the 3D template properties and click on the W beside the size to fit. I'm going to check uh, auto erase all caps, and then adjust the width by moving the width until the blue bounding box reaches the end of the bar. Now I'm moving the width by holding the left mouse button down and dragging the numbers right or the arrows up. Now let's rename the elements in the scene graph. I'll rename the 3D template name super and the 3D bar to name super bar. Now right click on the name super bar and select auto follow. The reference node will be the name super, and like we did previously, click on the position. But this time, select right connection point, and the reference anchor point is right as well. Now move the offset until the bar is in the correct place. Now when we type, the blue bar is moving to the right following the text, but the shape of the bar remains intact. There is no scaling. So let's type name super again, and I want to add a flare bitmap that will appear at the right end of the bar. This flare should automatically follow the end as well. The reference node will again be the name super. For the flare we will select a connection point and a right reference point. Now adjust the offset so the flare is at the end of the bar. Now when we start typing again, the flare will move with the right end of the bar. The goal with this is to make a little animation of a flare appearing at the end of the animation and in the correct position. So I've already made an example of a completed animation that has the flares already in place. You can also see flares on the breaking news yellow bar as well. Now you will notice that this scene has two different effect ends. The first affects all three bars and the text and the second one just does the bottom two bars. This is a good example of adding a simple conditional transition which will do the correct effect in depending on what the text appears on the breaking news bar. So select transition properties and click the conditional transition button. We just have to add one condition for this to work. So click add and check the play checkbox because the condition needs to work when the scene is played to air. You can type in your own description of this rule. The condition type is content and click add. Now let's select the BN text, which is the breaking news text template name. The scene to check would be the internal scene, and I'm going to check anything, which means if there is anything in that template field, the rule response for the effect in will be effect in all. Now click the else, which means do the opposite of the above rule, or if there is no text in the BN, uh, the BN text template, the effect in will be effect in bottom. Okay, so let's see what happens after recording this scene and then erasing the text in the BN text template. When it affects in, the breaking news and the yellow bar will not be seen. Now if we reread the scene and play it to error, now all three bars animate on.